Hello and welcome to Bird Barrier. Here we are at Pro Lab Studios. My name is Michael Galleon. I do business development for Bird Barrier. And with me is Tony Jaton, who is our, our long-term veteran of bird control, who's been with the company longer than anybody here at Bird Barrier. And today what we're gonna talk about, Tony, is how to stay safe doing bird control. Yeah. Important subject, right? I think so. <laughs> I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, gosh, I mean, when you, when you bring that up, how to stay safe, I'm thinking, okay, there's a lot of that is geographical. You know, you, to a guy that uh, his clients, the, the majority of his clients are in New York. Yeah. And he, ha and he works with these big commercial buildings, like yep. in Manhattan. That's, that's a whole different type of safety. Great as, point. As to the guy that's in the r rural Indiana. That's a right? great point. I didn't even really think about that yeah. when we were going to prep for this. But you're right. It's like the canyons, the urban canyons of New York yeah. pre present like these really unique challenges because, yeah. you know, the streets themselves don't even allow you to even do a lift. So many times these guys do the bosun chair, right? They have to go off the ledge and they're on like a small little little rope. I know. Like, what the hell is I that? Know, right? Could you <laughs> Have imagine? you ever done that? No. Okay, Thank well, you. let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Worst injury that you ever got doing bird control? Um, I think it was just, you know, sliding off of a ladder and having my arm and my elbow, uh, you know, Ooh, down, down yeah. the ladder. Yeah, you feel it. You feel that for a few days, and it could have been a lot worse. You oh, keep man. Getting a leg caught in between, you know, that's the stories, bad. The stories, yeah. dude, the stories <laughs> that I've heard. I don't, I'm not going to – look, the, the purpose of this is not to scare people yeah, from right. doing bird control, <laughs> but it's foolish because, yeah. right, 95% of the time it could have been avoided, yeah. these things. Like whatever happened on your ladder, yeah. do, would, would, would you admit that you probably did something wrong yourself? Yeah. Yeah, I just it? ignored the fact that it was slippery. Okay. You know, there was dew. Good, there was, good point. There was moisture yep. out. And I, I tracked that up on my boots on the ladder there, itself. There you go. Yeah. So there you go. So so what do we do? Let me ask right there. When there's moisture, what? how do you... You got do? you got to be you got to be conscious of that. Yeah. You, know, you just have to be conscious. And of course, you can, you know, you can get that traction tape and put it on your ladders if they don't have it. Okay. Most there's... ladders have that grid on there. But if you want to go a step further, you can add that traction. So really, I think the thing yeah. that you would have done differently with the moisture you just would have been more cognizant yeah. of the fact that it was damp yeah. and that you needed to kind of work at a little bit slower pace at least on your footings with a little bit of moisture make sure your foot is locked and you're solid before and of course while well, the rule of ladder safety right there are three yeah. points of contact right so right off right. the top here we can talk about that going up and down ladders ladders right. are very common bird control and the biggest thing about ladders is that, you know, at all times you need to either have two feet and one hand secure, and then you got one free limb, right? So in that situation, yeah. one hand's locked on the rung, yeah. two feet are locked lower. Then, now that I've reestablished, now I have four points of contact, right. I now have the option to free up one of my limbs, still maintaining three points. At that point, I lift my leg up, and then until that leg is secure, that's the thing. In the sm slightest miscue yeah. is where guys leave a momentary lapse, yeah. slightly, like they're thinking going up that ladder, I'm gonna let go of the rung just before I get my foot on. That is a big mistake you know, right there. What's so great about this uh, conversation is we can branch off into, <laughs> into all these things. So that brings up another really good point. At what point do you determine that it's more beneficial for you to have another employee on this job at what no. point do you decide that this is not a one-man job this is a two-man job because when you're using ladders yeah a lot of times we have to bring product up those ladders that's right, yeah, right. so keeping all those points of contact and lifting up a big water bucket let's say if you're going to clean yep you know there's there's an issue right there. you know that that you're right and one of the things about three points of contact is I will see, you know, people will be very good at, you know, three points of contact, mm -hmm. but they'll have something in their hand. Yeah, right. And I guess what? By default, at that moment, you're never going to have proper three points of contact if you've got something in your hand, even if it's an ink pen. The point is, you've got to have 
three solid points of contact, and especially if it's slippery, like Tony yeah. mentioned, right. your foot on the rung, get it secure, it's sliding over the rung, and then yeah. man, get that heel buckled, put it against the side part of the ladder, get it in the corner, then free up and move on, right? Yeah. Securing those three points of contact. But your hands, okay, you got a couple different options. I wear a backpack, but I wear a tight backpack because sometimes you're going up the ladder and there's yeah. the safety cage right. around the upper portion. Few times I've had right. my uh, measuring tools, right? Usually I use a rolling measuring tool. Right, wheel. Sticking out, right, the wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm sticking out of the backpack, got the little handle. Yep. I'm going up and it gets caught in the cage and it, <laughs> oh my gosh, so there you go. So the backpack has to be, be very tight to the body. Yeah. Right, so and I keep everything. You know, you get that, get that backpack secure. Then you get up to the top, and you're up safely. Aside from that, gotta bucket things up with a rope, right? Yeah, ropes. You know, you, you get up on top. You can leave the backpack down. You can throw the rope over with a carabiner, hook it up, and pull it up. That sort of thing. But I I think what uh, needs to be said is if you have the opportunity to take a ladder cert class, you can do it through OSHA. You can go online, you can find these classes around uh, lift rental places as yep. well, and you can get your lift cert. Usually pretty inexpensive to do this. Usually it's under $100, but these certs go a long way along with your insurance. Yep. So um, if you have these certs, they'll help you in the long run. It's just good information to know. Absolutely. Now in pest control, PMPs are required to get these certs. The yeah. Insurance, liability, these are you know really critical and you know we we see a trend right now in residential pest control going away from even allowing people on ladders this is why because there are dangers of ladders but if you are maybe in facility management you know you may not be aware of all these certifications that really you should take um, it's amazing how little people know about how to operate a ladder how, yeah. how critical it is and That's you right. know the, if you go to Home Depot and you look at the ladder, there's all these warnings on the side. You read right. all that fine print, like they're letting you know that, dude, we're not going to be liable right. when you right. fall off the roof. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be our fault. You have to follow all these guidelines. But following the guidelines will result in safety, and and these are all controllable issues. Now, ladders are a big part of bird control, but at a certain point. The professional is going to do lifts. You mentioned lifts. Yeah. Now, those are either it's a scissors lift that's just going to come up in a straight single motion, right? And you've got the deck where you're going to work from. It does mm -hmm. not articulate off center. Right. And then you have articulating boom lifts that, of course, go way up in the air, right. and they have the articulation so that the main arm can reach in on on facilities right now we know of a lot of bird professionals that will only do their work from lifts they don't yep. allow ladders because they're so much safer but at the same point there's certification available and then one of our modules that we do on access equipment tells you how to get your certification for under a hundred bucks online mm -hmm. and believe it or not it sounds hokey right just get training online there's really good information online to get you up to speed so you have your certificate but when you get to the site i mean look logic will dictate you got to take it out for a test spin you don't yeah. just go to a site with never having used the lift the beauty is that lift companies that offer certification as part yeah. of their service they also offer the ability for you to at the site where you're going to rent it from to go there and operate several lifts they'll they're more than happy to let you test drive them yeah. with a technician on site that know how to do all of the proper uh, instruction on how to use it properly so yeah. get yourself certified if you're going to be using the lift lifts are amazingly safe when you use them properly what do you look for when you're when you're looking at lifts for a project well you know, typically because of what... Good question, right? It is a good question, but yeah. I have to answer it from the viewpoint of where I'm here. I am the business yeah. development person with a company yeah. and my restrictions of insurance end at the site. And like I recently was up at a site, you know, there to consult. Right. And I had to allow 
the people on site to give me the harness, harness me, because I'm covered right. under their insurance at this point. Right. And then they made the choice to get their own lifts. Now, as far as um, what I would prefer with lifts myself personally yeah. is just to either, like, believe it or not, Home Depot, they yeah. offer rental right. of lifts. Right. Because if you can get your lift geographically nearest to the site, that's right. always best. But the national companies, I find, are, right. are more reliable in terms of safety and protocol. So I will right. always want a national company, not just some one-off company that right. offers lift rentals. Those can be scary because they yeah. aren't as regulated. Right, right. right? And I'm, you know, I'm also looking for electrical outlets in the bucket with me. Yep. You know what I mean? That's true. So if you're doing a net job and you have a pneumatic net ring tool, you can plug right in. Right. You don't need 30 feet of, of uh, pneumatic hose. Exactly. So you know what I mean? So you're looking for all the updated uh, neat things that will work with you uh, in your project. Right. So, yeah. so get ladder certified, get lift certified. Now let's talk about the actual physical your physical yeah. body, you show up at a job site, you're gonna do work. I wanna, I wanna point out a few key things that people need. Now, you mentioned electrical. Yeah. Now, why electrical may matter a lot in terms of your safety at a site is that uh, many times when you are doing cleanup at a bird site, you are standing in water <laughs> and if you are plugging in devices, you better be plugging into a ground fault protected system. Right. That will shut off if you short the system. So that's one of the dangers. That brings us to some of the equipment you wear as well, which is you got to have good rubber insulated boots right. to have good traction. Just as Tony mentioned, you yeah. know, just regular shoes don't cut it. it not only for traction, but for the safety of disease vac factors, you want to have right. boots. Uh, boots that go over your normal shoes are actually pretty good as long yeah. as the bottoms have good traction right. to them. There are a lot of different brands out there that are designed for this. And they're very high. They go up at least to the knees. If not, the full hip waders that come right. all the way up. We'll see in bird control guys that wear those right. just to keep their lower legs all through their shoes safe. They have good traction, they have good seal from disease. Right, and all of these things we're talking about have exceptions, right? So if this is a new structure and your customer says, hey, I wanna do preventative maintenance here, yeah, th that kind of extra wear is not necessary, not extremely necessary. Just your regular boots are gonna be fine. But if you're going up on a rooftop that's had five years of seagulls Net or gulls nesting on it, and there's you know four or five inches deep of bird droppings there. That is a huge health risk. Not only your boots, but now we're talking Tyvek Tyvek suits, right? Gloves, eyewear, HEPA filter respirators. There you go. Now yeah. let's let's do that. I'm going to go from the top down. We covered yeah. the so top down. Of course, first we got to have a hard hat. We really should yeah. have a hard hat whenever you're doing bird works. You have your safety hard helmet that you're wearing on top. Then when we get down further, we're going to come to the eyes. Yeah. There's a mistake that people make in bird control. They'll, we'll, they'll just wear safety glasses. Right. Well, guess what? We're talking about breathing in spores. We talked about this earlier on other podcasts where you can breathe in the disease factors. Bird droppings are often like asbestos. They're yeah. safe until disturbed. They become airborne. You breathe them in. Same thing with your eyes. The, the small particles can actually land on the surface of your eyes and you can yeah. get the disease that way. You yeah. get these really bad eye infections. Guys mm. will not be thinking. They'll have their hands in drops and then they'll scratch their eye or removing sweat. And man, that's a big mistake right there. Sweat, the way it all gets into yeah. your eyes. Right. They'll have great mask protection, right. but they won't have the sealed eyes. So your eyes have to be goggles yeah. with sealed. Yeah. You should you know, have a good firm seal on your eyes yeah. for that. Yeah, your Ray-Bans won't work. Right, right. <laughs> now, we, you mentioned the breathing part. Let's, yeah. let's, you mentioned HEPA filter, right? Yeah. That's correct. You, know, you want at least the standard, like, you know, the even K, KN95 masks yeah. are, are, are suitable. However, yeah. Tony, if you see us, if you're actually watching this, Tony is going to be much safer than I ever will be at bird control cleanup 
for one big factor that is often overlooked. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's because uh, Michael... Uh, is... I, I have a beard. Yeah. Now, the reason I have a beard we mainly... Call Michael from the North. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you the reason mainly I keep this beard so I don't have to freaking do cleanup. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I have to be able... Now, yeah. Tony, with you know, a clean-shaven face, he's going to get a right. proper tight seal. Yeah. When he puts on the proper mask or goggles, whatever it is, he's going to get a nice tight seal and the way that we know we have a tight seal is that when we go to breathe in, if we can breathe in, guess yeah. what? You're going to breathe in particles. If right. you go to breathe in and there's, you feel that tight seal, then you're going to be really well protected. Well, let's talk about uh, what we do to, to stop the particles from becoming airborne. Oh, yeah. Right? There you go. So, so the first thing, if you know you're going up into an area like this you, and you know this previous, let's say you have a drone that went up and took pictures and video on the top of this roof. Let's just say you have one, but you're not scheduling the cleanup until a week later. You should already have your BNG sprayers. You should have your mix already done. Uh, you go up with all this equipment uh, ready to go. And the first thing you do is start to get that wet up there. Spray it to down. stop it from yeah. becoming airborne. There you go. Yeah, that's a very common practice at construction yeah. sites still wet down the dust, keep the dust levels down. The same right. thing with bird dropping residue. Now, I see a lot of overkill. Guys will put so much water in that right. guess what? Now they're bringing out, you know, 80 pound bags that are sopping wet. Right. Now you got risk of back injuries right. and stuff, right? So you got to use your discretion, but you want to just keep the overall dust level down. And, and then right. when you start doing your cleanup and you can do proper disposal, of the droppings. There's a whole method for that. In a biohazardous waste dump. That's right. And, yeah. and also, you, we double bag. We always double bag the droppings. You get them nice and tight, tight. Put that inside another bag. Seal that up. Right. Now that's safe to dispose of properly. But as far as you on the work site, another thing is you don't want to be eating and drinking. <laughs> right. Guys will right. stop for a minute, take off their gloves, and start eating. Well, no. That's just, you're directly in the line of fire there. Right. The, you should really consider that even at best, you can generally have, you want to keep yourself hydrated. Yeah. So um, screw top this, bad bad idea. Taking your hand with the dropping mess, unscrew, and the, bad idea. So having this freestanding draw uh, straw, yeah. one, and especially one that curves downward. Right. Right. That, believe it or not, that, Right. Can factor in keeping it in your in your truck, keeping away from the site. Then you're going to come out. You're going to get some good hydration. Yeah, that those way. backpacks, those hydration packs. Yeah, are good. That yeah. that's good too. But you got to think yeah. about all those factors yeah. and avoid touching your face. Right? We've learned a lot from COVID, like about spread of disease that's things by point. touching your face. Yeah. But I see I see guys all the time. One other thing that comes into play. Yeah, is something you probably aren't thinking of. There's one more part of the body that needs protection many times when you're doing bird control. You guess well, what we've it is? We've talked about the feet. We've talked okay. about yep. uh, Tyvek suit. The Tyvek suit is a great thing Gloves, to press, right? Eyewear, helmet or hat. Yep. One other thing. Um, I'm gonna say, you got me fooled. I'm going to say one word and you're probably going to figure it out. Okay, what is it? Hilti. Oh. Uh, so you're talking about your air hose, pneumatic? No. Hilti. First time I was exposed to a Hilti, I go to a job site with a oh. guy. We go up onto the lift, and out of nowhere, I hear this gunshot that, oh, oh my God, dude, where? And it <laughs> yeah, right. just starts pounding the Hiltis. Right. The reason I wasn't ready is this guy standing inches away. It has no hearing. Oh, protection. ears. Right. No Good ear protection. Point. And okay. it was excruciating. Now, I'm a musician. I play guitar. And my ears are very sensitive to sound mm. anyway. Mm. It was like I got needles stuck in my ears and I immediately covered mm. them. I'm like, dude, I'm like, whoa, 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 mm. time out. Right. Like, where's your ear? Oh, I don't wear a hearing. I do this all my, and like, right. oh my gosh, listen, don't do foolish things like that. Like, the Hilti is 
that is loud. <laughs> Firing a bullet into steel I beam. Oh, man. One of the loudest noises yeah. I've ever that's, heard. That's a that's a point two seven red shot. Oh load. my gosh! It had to be like two hundred decibels. Right. Like literally, and it just and then he's just pounding one after another. Right. And I loved his efficiency, but come on, ear protection. That's easy. Put plugs in. Put yeah. yourself some noise cancelers on there. Yeah. There's no harm in that. You don't want to look. You only have two ears. You've got a lifetime. There are beautiful music sounds, and you're going right. to want to hear your grandchildren laughing. <laughs> and the, right. But you, these elderly people, and they like can't hear. You know, like even when I played in rock bands, yeah. I, can't, I wore ear protection. I mean, yeah. I, luckily, I can hear music still today. So I think it's safe <laughs> to say, if you're planning on shooting Hilti into I beams, protect your ear ears. Ear protection. Yeah. So hopefully, this has been helpful. These are all might seem common sense to you guys that yeah. do bird control on a regular basis but yeah. you know what maybe there are things that people hadn't thought of today yeah. uh, that you listen to this has been helpful so thank you tony for joining me on this one thank you michael for the invite yeah you got it all right so that covers how to stay safe doing bird control now if we've left something out yeah. you know there's pros out there they're gonna be like dude you left out this this yeah. and this go ahead yeah we're humble guys please make this even better and we will do an addendum maybe to this sure. or in the comments below wherever you're listening wherever you're seeing this put your comments and let us know let's see who can think of the most things that we left out on this podcast well there's right? so many I'm different okay. scenarios there's so many different scenarios from commercial to residential there's no way we could cover them all right That's now right. so yep. we're always going to leave something out but we're always interested in, in your feedback right. so please so, don't hesitate yeah so keep the comments yeah. and questions coming yeah. i'm michael gallion this is tony jaton we will see you at the next podcast thank you